Is something burning? John, you were the motherfucking toast again. Damn. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome back to Toasted. This episode, we're talking about respect in society. But before we get into all that, there's a quick word about our sponsors. So our sponsor is TY CBD. Uh, they make chocolate bars that are made with pure CBD isolate, which can help do things such as lower anxiety and depression. It can help you sleep. Um, it can help with headaches and different pain points and a lot of stuff like that. So they're offering 15% off to Toasted listeners. So if you check out their Instagram or Facebook, you can find more, more information on either where to go to purchase them or how to call and order them. You do need to be in the Ohio area, but if you mention it toast to the podcast, you get 15% off. Like John mentioned earlier, our podcast today is on respect, and it's the first of a series of episodes that we're going to have on respect. And this one is dealing with just respect in society and how we act in everyday life. Okay, guys, so being that we are talking about respect in society, uh, we're going to break down even further and specifically talk public places and how to be respectful in public places. I think the one I want to start off with is in restaurants and bars. Okay. Um, because me working security at a bar, right. being respectful in a bar, especially to me when I'm trying to you know, make sure everyone's safe for the evening, right. is a big deal. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, when I, I feel like when you go to restaurants and bars, one of my biggest pet peeves is when people don't clean up after themselves, or at least clean up to the best of your ability, because there are people who have to come clean up your area, and they're trying to do it as quickly as possible, and turn over tables as quickly as they can, right. and so, like, when you sit there and rip up your straw wrapper <laughs> into a hundred little pieces, pieces and sprinkle it everywhere... Like, okay, I'm going to be honest, like, I'm the type of person that will do, like, will rip it up just because right. I, you know, I'm always doing stuff with my hands, but then at least clean it up, like, put it somewhere, like... Scoop it into the cup. Right, right, exactly, right. like, put it into a little trash thing or something. Just little gestures to show that, like, you know, I'm yeah. not a dick, you know. Just don't believe it as <laughs> right. it is on the camera. Like, so, my point of view, my family owns a bar that John works at, Bob's bitch is out of this place, um, <laughs> <laughs> and... Like, I get it. Like, I understand people are drinking, they're having a good time, but, like, any little thing you can do to help, just clean up or stack the cups up, or don't do that if you're too drunk, because then you make more of a mess. But, like, if yeah. you spill something, let us know. Because wants you to have a good time. Right. And right. Come in there and have fun. Right. But at the same time, if you guys, you know, mess up the entire place. Right. Not meaning to. You're just drunk, trying to have a good time, and don't clean anything up and leave, then the people that do work there, like me and Frank and everyone else, has to hang out there after we shut down, get you guys all out the door before right. we can even start doing our regular closing routine, let alone having to clean up after all you guys. the entire bar space after. Which I get, I mean, shit happens. People are drunk, you run into each other, you knock shit over, just let us know, we'll clean it up. But just that way we don't make more of a mess. Not a health, health risk, anybody can slip and fall. Yeah. Not trying to get sued. <clears throat> uh, you know. But also be respectful and not stealing things, too, because I'm pretty sure aren't there, there's zero fish bowls left. Zero fish bowls. Yeah. At the bar. Oh, you motherfuckers steal the fish bowls. I think we started off at about nine. No, we have not. Yeah, and it's and I mean, we it's now have zero. Right, because now... And it's funny, bowls. because we mentioned being out of fish bowls to someone, and the one kid's like, yeah, I think my friend took one of those. Yeah. It's like... What are your friend to, like, Ohio? bring it back. <laughs> right. Or give me, like, two bucks, I'll give it to you. Or didn't didn't someone Just steal kidding. something or steal one of the bartender's coats? Yes. Yeah. That happened something once. like that. And that's just it's not cool. Her right. coat with her keys and everything in it. Right. It's like respect basically when it comes to bars and restaurants, you're out having a good time, respect where you're at, respect that business, respect the people that own that business. Yeah. Like, like don't take something that's right. not yours. Just don't make like try to have And if you do want to take something from the bar that's not yours, I don't know, maybe ask because we might know someone like whose it is or right. they're either going to get it right. back or they're going to be like no you know what you can have it right probably not but <laughs> you try right and we say we because it's like our bar you know the bar that we're yeah. originally at hang out but, right. but just where you are in general when I, whenever you go somewhere in your house like, yeah. communicate with people around you if you're a regular at a bar and you go in there for every, like what, multiple days a week right 
And you see that something hanging on the bar hook that's been there for four or five weeks now. All right, ask someone about it. Because chances are, maybe it is the lost and found thing. If you really want it, maybe they'll give it to you. Right. But don't just assume shit. Or take, start taking stuff. Like, fish bowls definitely aren't free. <laughs> you know, the coats that are hanging up on the walls. <laughs> Getting into our next topic about respect, we wanted to bring up with your family and friends, and we had mentioned this in one of our other podcasts, at least I have, like, when I'm hanging out with you, like, I'm giving you my time, and I hope you respect me enough to not be on your phone, or, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, can you, like, look at me when we're, we're supposed to be hanging out, having a conversation? I, uh... Whatever. I mean, yeah, we could check, like, we get a text about saying... I can't remember um, how this idea came into existence. I, I don't, but like, you'll have to explain, but I'm, I'm not like a phone Nazi. Uh, I like... was sitting there at one of our meetings on my phone <laughs> while Courtney was asking us questions. So straight back, yeah, that's exactly what And I looked up and said, what'd you just say? <laughs> After she was trying to explain something to me for like five minutes straight? Yeah. Yeah, that's how that came into existence. Right. Yeah, no, but it's a valid point. Right. I mean, and I'm not saying you can't be on your phone, but, like, if we're hanging out, like, yeah, if we have, like, a pause, okay, check your phone real quick, or someone yeah. goes to the bathroom, but, like, be, like, don't have be, a couple yeah, fucking yeah, station. Don't do like, it, uh, sure. when someone's we, talking to you. <laughs> right. We definitely got into that a lot more in last week's podcast, so if you did not listen to that, a little shout out to go back and listen to that, because we talked all about technology in life. But, no, it's true. I mean, you just... And you don't get the most out of the time you spend, and then you go home and you're like, what did we even do, or what did we even talk about? I don't remember, because I spent half the time on my phone. Oh, right. With people who aren't even there. Yeah. And that you can always talk to later. Um, so, another public place that I think is really interesting, that there's a lot of disrespect that I see happen, um, is in a movie theater. And yes. it's, like, I recently saw a movie, and... Just multiple people <clears throat> talking throughout the movie and having conversations, right. and it's like, you know, I get it, there weren't many people in the theater, but that didn't mean that there weren't still people who were trying to focus and pay right. attention. Especially now that, uh, like, the previews are encouraging you to have your phone out and, like, play the uh, little app, you know, trivia and right. games mm-hmm. and stuff that they have. Right. Oh, phones are going to be the worst. And then it's like... All of a sudden, it's they do a little okay. Please turn off your phones now. Then for a split second, right. movies, you just were telling everyone to have their phone out, right? Playing an interactive game, right? You gonna put a one second message on screen that says okay, turn them off now. We're trying to start the movie. Like that's actually gonna happen. <laughs> They're gonna be like, oh, maybe I'll put it on vibrate now. Right. Right. Close out of my game while the beginning of the movie is playing. <laughs> right. And it's also like when. You're there, and there's a family there, and the, the child gets upset or starts crying. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, it can be annoying, but like, you, they're embarrassed by it. You know what I mean? Right, like, you have to have a mutual respect. Give them at least give them a chance to like try to get the kid to calm down or take him out of the theater before you like go ape shit crazy. You know? Yeah. It's okay. Just yeah. Little things like that. Or well, people aren't that into the movie. They try and they'll have a conversation with who they're with, and they're not right. in the movie. It's like right. Or mm-hmm. when your friends, you know, fall asleep in the row behind you. Hey, it theater. happened one time. <laughs> All right, I was tired. I laid down. Frank's like, Frank's like, the, just wake me up before it gets like the good part of the end. <laughs> it goes one row behind us and lays down and <laughs> was taking a nap. And I start sn- like I had my head on the thing. And everyone's looking the aisle, back at me when I, I started the snoring and they oh couldn't see God. me. Yeah, <clears throat> everyone lets you getting dirty looks from the old man. Right. So why you snore? I lean back like smack Frank. <laughs> he goes, and of course starts snoring in the quietest part. I'm like, eh, my bad. <laughs> um, but yeah, just like movie theaters in general, be respectful. Make sure you take your garbage to the damn trash. Like, just like we have to clean up the bar, people have to clean up the movie theater. You know what I mean? Pick up the everywhere, trash. Everywhere you go, someone's got to clean it up. Right. So, like, be respectful towards them and keep it clean. Oh, I love Alright, so this next topic, this is one. Drive in. <laughs> oh, oh boy. man. Here we go. <clears throat> I feel like there's so many ways that people are disrespectful when driving, and I feel like in general it just comes down to you have to remember you are not the like everybody is on the road, everybody's trying to go somewhere, everybody's trying to get to a destination. Right. And you cannot act like you're the only person on the road and try to dominate 
Unless you are the only person on the road. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're talking about respect. Other than that, no. Uh, don't, don't act that way. No, for sure. Like, <laughs> um, no, John, you had that great example of when you're trying to get off the X lane. Oh, when you're trying to, yeah. Pass. So, I hate it when people are either the merge lanes or exits. Mm-hmm. There's always the people that, like, everyone's going, you know, alternating cars for the lane. Right. Trying to keep traffic moving. Right. And you got someone that pulls and then flies the whole way to, like, the edge of the merge lane or the exit ramp and wiggle their way over and just cut everybody off. It's right. like, no, dude, for real. Everyone's waiting, taking their turn, getting through this, so we all go faster, and you're going to be one that tries to hold up traffic. And he right. sits up there and honks. Right, it's just like... It's like 55 to... cars in front of you, you just saw getting over way right. ahead of time. Are you going to fly up to the front of the line and try to cut everybody? What are you, queen of fucking... And it's only going to save you an extra two, three seconds? Right. right. It's like if people did it everything the right way when it comes to that, it'd be a lot more <laughs> And then it moves faster. Exactly. Right. It kind of goes into the next one, and it's an airplane. And <laughs> I love, on Twitter, I follow, like, Andre Nod, Dustin, all these... Reporters that travel with the, the Browns and the Indians, and they go, you know, what I really hate is when you get off, you're about to get off the plane, and the person from the back is trying to run off the plane, and it's like everybody's trying to get their luggage out, and you're just causing problems. Be patient. The smoother the process is, the faster you get off the plane. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Take your time. Wait. <clears throat> and that's why I think it's so interesting, too, especially, like, kind of going back to driving, is... That it, even if you, so if you, you're speeding up and you are riding up on somebody's ass to get through a light and you're like, come on, get through this light faster, you're still going to end up getting to the next light at the exact same time as that car that is behind you that you sped up from or passed right. or went by really fast. Like, be, the way the traffic lights are and the way traffic patterns are, you end up getting to the same destination the same amount of time anyways. So you might as well just be patient and take your time and right. get the flow of traffic because you're going to get held up by lights and stop signs and all just that no matter A natural what. process. Right. And if you don't, you're going to end up getting into an accident. And it's when you're less careful. It's when you're being fast and yeah. patient right. that you pay less attention and right. accidents happen. The only, way quick, the only way quickly is around red lights is through red lights. <laughs> and that's not illegal. I mean, it is. It is I don't know. That's not legal. Right. It's still illegal. I should, yeah. <laughs> I had that right the first time. <laughs> yeah, it's not a wise thing. And then waiting in lines. You have a good example, checking IDs. I don't want to go to waiting in lines. And I have one more for driving. All right, go ahead. Um, <laughs> it is disrespectful to call the police when you clearly see best friends playing bumper cars with their cars in public. <laughs> All right, you did it one time. <laughs> No, I swear, I, you, you, Frank was playing bumper cars with our buddy X Games. X Games, and uh, <laughs> like, act, like actually, yeah, yes, we like leaving, with their cars. We were, we went to the, we went swimming, the, 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 uh, our spot, and on the way back, <laughs> X Games pulls up to a light, pulls up to the light. Frank pulls up behind him. I'm in the light next to him. Bumps into the truck. Light turns green. They peel out. The lady across the, in the lane across from there is looking at me like, should we call that one? What? I'm like, no. Those are my friends. They're okay. I'm pulling the gas station kid. Yeah, like I caught up with them later. Apparently they did like the whole way back to the house. Anytime they stop at a stop, they're trying to bump each other. Yeah, it got a little, well, you know, let's be smart. So, yeah, I mean. Uh, Road rage, call the cops. Yeah, do not try this at home. Good Road rage, call the cops. Best friends playing bumper cars, leave that one alone. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. But yeah, don't mess with people at Road Rage either. Like, yeah, no, fuck that. Them. One time I was driving back to school, and I was right, I was at like a point where there was a couple lights, and the one dude was on this other guy's ass, and he, the, the guy in front of him broke, and then... <laughs> The other guy broke, and then they were honking, and the guy in front got out of his car. The guy behind him was like, I don't know what the fuck to do. And I was in the right lane like, deuces, I'm not fucking with that shit. Because that was some, and we were like in the country, and I'm like, hillbilly shit. I'm That's like, your brother. 
I've been, I've been uh, uh, in the car when you put it in parks because I'm going to go talk to this guy. <laughs> I said, oh no, you are not. And I put the car back in drive. <laughs> <laughs> Yee <Yee-yee>. Oh, <laughs> man. Yeah, moving on. Yeah, so, let's move on now. <laughs> so, waiting in line. Waiting in line. Yes, John. Don't be a cutter. <laughs> if people got there, like, I'm talking like a big line. If it's two or three people, all right, maybe you could cut if you have a good reason. Someone's struggling to pull their idea out. Something, you know, but if it's a big line, people got out there early enough to be in that line for a reason. Right. And it's multiple people. If you're the one that's late, that's your problem. Right. End of the line. <laughs> that's all I'm saying about that. <laughs> no, I agree, for sure. So, before we get into our next topic... That goes along with the respect. I just wanted to say, like, you find out all these ways in society where you just can be more respectful. And it's, I want to, like, be able to give you guys tips on how to do it. But it really just comes down to, like, don't be a dick. You know what I mean? Like, no, for sure. It, like, it's not hard. It's something anybody could change. And uh, I don't want to sit here and feel like we're just shitting on you if you do all these things. But, like, think about and it. And if you're honest with yourself, you know that you do some of them. Right. I mean, we all do some of them. You and I, yeah, we all do some of them. We just, you gotta try and mentally make a note to stop yourself, right. correct yourself. Just try to be better every day. Right, and put bit. yourself in the other person's position. If you were the one doing that job, or you were the one who has to clean up after yourself, you know, it's, there are things that, yeah, they might be funny to do, like when you're messing with people at restaurants, and it might seem funny, but if you were to put yourself in that other person's position, of having to clean that up or take care of that or the person that you're laughing at or making fun of or whatever. Like, I feel like something really disrespectful that a lot of people do now is they'll go places and record videos and they'll, like, pull pranks and record the people and they think they're being funny. And it's not funny. It's disrespectful. You know, those people have to clean up after you or have to deal with the repercussions of whatever mess you make in the retail store or restaurant or whatever funny thing you think you're doing. The only ones that are actually funny... Oh, the ones that they tie the bike to the string, and then when the people try and steal it, they get, like, oh, get yeah. off. Right. Those are actually yeah. funny. Like, don't try to steal a bike. That's why you get in the fall. <laughs> it hurt yourself. Yeah, that, that's very good. And the reason why we bring up these little social, these little uh, aspects of respect in social life is because, or in society, is because people watch your actions and see what you're doing, especially younger kids. And so if they feel like they could be disrespectful towards other people and public places and just not act right, it's because they see you doing these things. Like, you're setting the example for the younger generations, and it might not seem like a lot, but I know I sit there and I watch people older than me and I see how they handle situations or how they go about their life and what they do. And so it's like, there's people watching you. Be aware of that. And, yeah, you know. Young people are impressionable. Absolutely. I mean, if you're in public and you go places, I mean, when we're at restaurants, I, I think about it and it's like, even when I was maybe, say, 13 or 14 years old and, you know, we'd go out with our friends and go do things, we would look at the older people, the, you know, the high schoolers, the older teenagers and see what they were doing. And, we want to model ourselves after that because that's what we're going to be in a few years. Right. So you have to remember that and no matter where you are in life, there are always going to be people who are younger than you and more impressionable. And they're going to look at you and your actions and, you know, take those to heart and see those and, you know, learn from them. And sometimes they may know, they may be able to look at things and go, that's not what I should be doing. But right. a lot of times, you know, they may not necessarily know and they'll right. look at those things and be like, ooh, I'm going to do that too. I want to do that too. And so you have to remember and be cognizant of who's keeping your eyes on you. Well, like, you. I can give a good example. Like, right now, I was talking to Danny the other day, and we went out to dinner with one of my coworkers, and she was, like, talking about him and how personable he was and stuff. And I go, yeah, like, I work with him, and I see, and I learn from him how to be better interactively with our customers. Mm-hmm. And so, like, just simple stuff like that. Like, he might not understand that I'm learning from him every day, but... He respects so you the, are? I am, and he respects the business, and he does things the right way, and he's setting that example for me, whereas if there was someone else there being negative about it, not that I would 
I mean, I feel like I'm smart enough to realize that. But at the same time, it's nice to know that I have a coworker that I can learn from and lean on and grow uh, from. You're at least getting something even right. more out of the day versus having someone working with someone negative. Right, exactly. And it's, so it's just like, remember, you have that impact on other people. You don't, I feel like people are very self-minded and self-centered. So they, when they do, when they have actions, they only think about the repercussions on themselves and not everybody else. Yeah, and not that these your people have not one to listen to while he works. Yee yee. Not the point. I mean, it's, but, it's a very similar point. You're right. You well, have someone that is positive at being at work, whereas right. I'm working with, I am the positive one at right. work. Right. I get that. But what I'm saying is, is that it just comes down to remember that you're always setting an example for someone. People are always watching you and just try to be the best person you can be when it comes down to yeah. respecting everything in society. And younger people are always watching. Always. Well, and I think that that just made me think of an interesting point that um, a saying a lot that I feel like we heard growing up is respect your elders. But I think it's almost more important to not only that, but respect the people younger than you. Respect each other. Have a mutual Absolutely. respect. Absolutely. For everybody who's younger than you and older than you, respect the younger people enough to know that they are modeling after you, but also respect them when you talk to them and learn from them, because a person younger than you can teach you just as much as somebody who's older than you, because they're learning different things than we learn. Absolutely. And so I think it's super important to have a mutual respect no matter what age. And so, yeah, okay, respect your elders, but I think you, I think you should respect should go every single direction. Well, and that's like, I was, one time I, I was having a conversation with my mom, and her and my <laughs> sister were at odds about the whole kneeling thing with Colin Kaepernick and all that, and we're not going to get into that, but I was like, I understand that you don't have to agree with where she's coming from, but just respect that she has her own opinion about, opinion about it, and that... What she's saying isn't what you don't like about it. Like, she she sees all the positives from it. You see certain negatives from it. And I'm not saying you have to agree with what the idea of it, but respect the fact that she what she's saying is how she feels. And then, yeah, you guys can argue about it, but your feelings don't have to... If you have mutual respect for someone, it doesn't matter. You can, you can be real with them. You can have different opinions and still respect each other. Exactly. And, I'm not, and then it's mother-daughter, and I know that's deeper than what we're talking about, but... The point is, if you respect society, it's only going to yeah. help benefit your future because you're, you're being very impressionable on the younger generation. Mm-hmm. So, now, to finish up, we like to go into finish one of our up. favorite segments, which is, Once I Was So High, I... <laughs> every, every time. That, That's going to be the next every, time. Every motherfucking time I'm saying it like that. Oh, man. Every motherfucking time. Alright, let's do this. Kick John, it uh, your story up first. Okie dokie. <laughs> so, one time I was so high, <laughs> I, I'm not going to start it like that because I can't really tie that in, but, alright, it's the first time I was driving high. Yeah. My little brothers were in the car, <laughs> I stopped over at Frank's house to smoke before this movie. <laughs> I remember this. Uh-oh. Jackson Shy was there. JC baby. That's his little yeah. JC baby. And uh, I don't even remember. Charlie was there too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We got high and we jumped in the. I don't have to traverse. Yeah, the, the traverse. I've only ever driven like an old truck. <laughs> so like, I'm not used to like the dashboards and shit lighting up, like every single button glowing. Right. We got in this car and I turned it on and that's just a. That this thing lit up. I was like, I feel like I'm in a spaceship. <laughs> this is insane. <laughs> We're on the way to the movie. And I'm like, guys, you gotta let me know when I'm going too fast. I feel like I'm flying in this thing. <laughs> My brother looks at me and goes, dude, you haven't gone past 15 miles an hour yet. <laughs> I was like, really? He's like, yeah. I'm like, Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> then the other one goes, are you drunk? No. No, I remember. Oh, my God. Not drunk. This story, I remember it very vividly. And I don't remember, I don't remember 
the movie was any good after that or not. And I just well, remember that story. It was a Marvel movie, I'm sure. <sighs> so it was probably pretty good. Yeah. Right. But yeah, one time I was so high, I thought I was driving a spaceship. That's I mean, it's definitely, definitely interesting. I mean, it was I remember it as you told the story. And I'm like, I remember everything you said. So one time I was so high. It's gonna be short and sweet, so get ready. <laughs> it's all bad. Like, I mean, John was very in depth and like deep and storyline based. Mine's like maybe ten seconds, and you know I was fucked up because it's only ten seconds. <laughs> So, I get home from the bar, and you know, I park my car, I lock it. You know how your lights? Well, all right, so I turn to walk in the house, and I see a red dot on the ground. Instantly think, someone's trying to kill me. Like, it's supposed to be on my head, the shit's about to blow up. And, like, instantly, I mean, like, for three seconds, because I was so high, it felt like a minute. And then I turn and looked, and my headlights were on the car in front of me, the taillights. And so it was reflecting, and there was a dot, and I wasn't getting blown up. I just, you know. My lights were still on. So, and so, Frank was ducking and hiding from snipers. I literally, like, was like, <gasps> and then I'm like, oh, <laughs> I'm a fucking dumbass. Because, you know, just my headlight. Attention, oh. Frank's neighbors. <laughs> when he's ducking and diving around the front yard, <laughs> there's not actually anybody trying to shoot him. Nope. He's just really high. <laughs> so, yep. duck, dive, dive, dip, dive, and dodge. Yeah. Dodge, duck, dip, dive, nice dodge. Nice try, dodgeball. <laughs> nice try. I tried. I tried. Oh. Well, well, happy Zahulahan would be very upset with you right now. <laughs> with, with that being said, I just want to thank you guys for tuning in to another toasted podcast with a with a with a it's with a little tea guys. It's with a little tea, and I want to say that we appreciate you listening. Make sure you follow us I, and I, subscribe. I really do appreciate you listening to me babble. Babble, babble. Don't make fun of me, guys. <laughs> make sure you follow us on our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And remember, little T, little T, remember to be paying attention on our social media platforms to be getting sneak peeks for the future episodes. You don't have to pay attention if you don't want to. You just should, because they're really good. And then listen to next week's episode, yeah? Yeah. 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 Well, they better be listening to next week's episode. We're going to have to beat some ass. We will find you.